Purnima, thank you again for having me today. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you are watching this webinar. And thank you so much for joining us in this really critical conversation. So maybe I could just take a step back first before I dive into mental, mental health issues and talk about the sustainable development goals overall. So back in 2015, all 193 member states of the United Nations came together around a global problem solving agenda uh, um, that all countries participated in formulating and um, coming up with, with evidence-based solutions on some of the key issues that are facing our planet. So the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, as they're nicknamed, or Global Goals, uh, all of those terms work, uh, they mean the same thing, is a, is a framework of 17 different goals, um, of which health and wellness is one, that's goal three, and health and well-being is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all ages. And, uh, and so I really love that as this goal is framed, that it's, it's not just about health. It's not just about, you know, do you have a particular disease that you're battling um, that is a, a, a clinical disease or, uh, you know, that you're battling with your heart or you might be dealing with diabetes or you might be coping with an infectious or tropical disease, but it's also about well-being. And so well-being opens the door within the health frameworks for us to really talk about the whole person and to do this at a worldwide level. Um, some of the other goals, and there's a lot of intersection points, right, between these goals. They don't all just sit in isolation. So goal five, for example, is around gender and equality issues facing girls and women. Goal 10 is around reducing inequalities, which tackles vulnerable populations, those with physical disabilities, those dealing um, uh, with discrimination. And so it also deals with the, with the legal frameworks. Um, peace and security around goal 16, justice, access to, to safe legal systems where individual problems are recognized. And of course, throughout the entire sustainable development goal agenda, is the drumbeat of tackling climate and protecting our planet. Goal 13, which is around tackling climate change, um, goals around life on water, life uh, on land, um, really looking at the planet as a whole and infusing sustainability throughout the entire agenda. There are goals around access to good jobs, but there's also goals around responsible consumption um, and how we think about what we consume and the resources that we that we use so with that framework in the back of our minds knowing that there that countries have come together that governments have collectively said there's a plan and there's a pathway that we can take as a world to be able to face these issues head on and tackle them let's dive in a little bit to goal three so I am actually so excited around the opportunity to have more and more frank conversations around mental health and mental well-being. This has been too long a stigmatized issue, too long where we treat mental wellness as sort of a, a um, something that we are very quiet about and that we bury over to the side. And so the opportunity to, within this SDG framework, to really tackle our mental and emotional well-being as much and, and value it as much as we value our physical well-being is, is really critical. You know, there are 300 million people around the world, according to the World Health Organization or WHO, and we'll reference WHO a few times throughout our conversation, that suffer from depression. And depression is really one of the most critical factors in the, the many, um, the many uh, hundreds of thousands of suicides that happen around the world and so you know this is a really a, a really critical conversation the WHO said that in 2016 there were 800,000 suicides um, and so mental well-being is is something that we that is a planetary crisis and we need to we need to tackle it there's a lot being done so the WHO World Health Organization has come out with a, a framework and a plan for tackling mental wellness. There are a lot of factors in a person's overall mental and emotional health. So you could be dealing with a country that's been in conflict, which obviously affects many, many countries around the world. 
and the kinds of generational um, emotional crises that sit within a country when there have been many, many cycles of conflict and war. You've got the very basic and all too common issues around gender-based violence, for example, and so domestic violence issues where there can be enormous psychological as well as the obvious physical damage. There can be obviously genetic issues where we carry um, different diseases, mental diseases and conditions within our, our DNA. And, and so there are a variety of factors, both physical um, and, and sort of contextual around what might be going on in your life or in your community or in your country and then, and then genetic and sort of bringing all of those things together. So this is something that to some degree or another, whether we realize it or not, we all face. We all face anxieties. We all, at some point, have a day where we feel blue. You know, in English, it's, it's you feeling blue. That's the code word. But we all get sad. We all get into a, a, a state where we're not as sparkly and as optimistic. And, and, um, and then for some of us, that, that becomes something much more serious. And, um, and it, it is, an, you know, by those numbers alone, we can see that it's an overwhelming issue. Um, so, you know, there's a number of ways that, that different organizations, but, you know, obviously from the UN perspective, the WHO is really the, the, the global authority on, on these different um, perspectives. They're looking at ways to tackle early childhood interventions. They're looking at lots of sort of skills programs for children. Um, obviously, poverty is a big factor in mental wellness. And so, you know, even tackling economic programs that tackle poverty eradication are, um, are impactful on, on supporting mental health. Um, there's programs at, at targeting at the most vulnerable populations in the world, minorities, indigenous people, migrants, people, as I said, affected by conflicts and disasters, um, really sort of building programs that provide psychological interventions after disasters. Um, talking about mental health, health and mental wellness in schools, that's going to be, that's a critical part of the action plan. Um, stress prevention programs at work that can help people navigate housing improvement policies um, and community development programs, particularly around rural areas where people can be really far away from the help that they might need. And that actually plays a, into one of the case stories, case studies that we're going to, going to talk about in a little minute. And then um, the protection of rights and providing actual care for those who have mental disorders. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll stop there on the, on the solutions front. There's many, many ways that we know that we can tackle as communities, as societies, as families, and as countries, that we can tackle better mental health policies and, and, and protect each other and take care of each other. But